Hey, this is Kevin from Think Flight, and today we are going to begin building my first man carrying project. I've never built big, but today we are going really big. Let's get started. This will be a boat tow to Craniplan, and while I had thought this was an original idea, YouTube showed me otherwise. If you stumbled onto this video wondering what the heck an Craniplan is, think of it as a cross between an airplane and a hovercraft. As it moves forward, it compresses the air under its wing creating its own cushion for it to slide on. Much like the puck on an air hockey table, actually. I am about a week into this build and here is where we are at, so let's see how it got to this point. You may notice going forward we are getting some very nice shots, thanks to my cameraman slash beautiful wife and a camera upgrade. When RC Test Flight collaborated with me on one of the Akranoplan projects, I noticed he was getting some amazing looking shots, and he was kind enough to let me copy his camera setup. Enjoy! This project got started in XFLR5, and once it looked good there, I created a test model using some EPP, a hot wire cutter, hot glue, and foam board. Test pilot Bob the Monkey did the honors in confirming that the setup worked at small scale. It's your best one yet, Bob. Up to this point, I used one inch pink foam and that one half inch insulation foam with the silver backing that were both sourced from Lowe's home improvement stores. In addition, I used wood from the aircraft spruce location near me. Here I spent a little extra to get a stronger main spar which will carry the main forces experienced while flying. I blew up the airfoils I was using at the local Kinko's print shop to make some templates and then started cutting. Using the paper templates I then transferred the outline onto the pink foam sheets. The front and rear wings used different templates and once I had traced each one I then used the first cut rib to transfer the outline to the other ribs much more quickly. Cutting the ribs turned out to be quite the thing. After 8 hours of work with a saw I'd found at Lowe's that looked appropriate, I had all the ribs I would need for the project. Alright, so this uh, saw leaves a pretty rough edge here that I got get, got to get rid of with sandpaper. And you can see what it looks like here after I've cleaned it up a little bit on this stack of ribs. So, that's the front wing down. Got the rear wing to go. How many tubes of Gorilla Glue does it take to build an airplane? We're about to find out. To build the wing I needed to place one strip of spruce on the bottom and then placed one rib on top every 12 inches. I selected 12 inches to give a lot of support to the trailing edge as I don't know how hard the covering will pull when shrinking. Each one of those squares in between the ribs was cut on my hot wire cutter and it connects the lower spar to the upper spar which goes on last. If you pay close attention, you can see I wrap the whole spar structure with packing tape to keep everything tight and vertical. Then everything is weighted with really professional weights and the glue cures for a few hours after everything is activated with water. The trailing edge is just sort of tacked in place with Gorilla Glue at the moment. This will not be a sturdy structure until I start the cap stripping process later in the video. Here you can see I am just holding it in place with masking tape until the glue sets. You can see a D-box that we put on the wing, and to make this D-box, I'm going to start with some, it's called a R-Tech. I'm going to peel off one side, the plastic on one side, and leave the plastic on the other side so that it can bend around the corner better. So, I'll be doing that for a while, and then I'll get back to you. The D-box isn't really needed to keep the wing from twisting on this project as the span is so short. Instead, I'm using it to keep the covering from collapsing and wrecking the airfoil shape, as it would if there was no support there. Alright guys, so yesterday was mostly two steps backwards, as I tried to put the leading edge foam onto this panel. It didn't work out really well. I got the bottom set good with Gorilla Glue, and then as I tried to wrap it around the, the leading edge, it basically just pulled off the airfoil quite a bit and change the shape so dramatically like the Gorilla Glue couldn't even fill the gap. I'm using this little guy to try to rescue the panel. This is where the Gorilla Glue will really come into its own. It's very lightweight and will fill the gaps. And you can see here, even on the first panel, I kind of missed a little bit. This white foam should be attached to the pink foam, uh, as you see here. But as I came around the leading edge, it kind of pulled off a little bit. I think I figured out how to make this panel work as I wrap it this time. And then those last two panels I should be able to get perfectly if my idea works out on this panel. 
So After four failed three, two, three failed attempts <laughs> on that one, I finally figured out how to wrap this around the leading edge without breaking it. A strip of packing tape was needed on the D-Box foam directly over where it interfaced with the underlying rib. Some 3M90 was needed to secure the tape, and then the D-Box foam could be placed over the front section of the wing. After finishing the taping process, the wing section was laid flat on a scrap piece of foam and weights were placed to keep everything flat while the glue cured. The D-Box foam was not a perfect fit, so the excess was removed and sanded flat. Okay guys, so I'm just going to take this little ply cut out here and I'm going to Gorilla Glue it in here to give us a little of a shear resistance. You can see it's a little buddy over there already in place. so. And off we go. I am also adding wing tips to each panel, but forgot to film that. So I'll just show a little clip of me sanding some spackle I placed in a larger defects on the wing tip. For the rib caps, I will be using fiberglass that takes on the shape of the letter C when you wrap it over the rib. But I have a little bit of a problem because there's a gap between the rib and the D box. So I need to fill that in and I'm just going to fill that in with some uh, Gorilla Glue. And then I'll sand it flush and then we'll I won't have to worry about that section buckling. That's next. Fiberglass really isn't optimal here. You would probably want wood or carbon for the actual cap, but let's be real. This is a home improvement store towable water toy, so let's see if we can save some money and effort and get away with this. After laying out some fiberglass and spraying it with 3M77, I marked some lines and cut the fiberglass into 3 inch strips. These were then ironed in place with the iron set at 100 Celsius to avoid melting the foam. In the next video I will be epoxying these to give them their strength. I haven't decided if I will fiberglass the D-Box. Let me know in the comments if you think it is worth the wait or if the covering will be enough over the foam form. Also I haven't decided on fabric or laminate for covering. I'd like to hear your opinions on that as well. If you enjoyed this style of video for a build, and also if you find the builds valuable and not just what I do with the project after it's built, please let me know in the comments and also by doing the normal youtube -y stuff for the algorithm. That's it for this video, and in the next one I will wrap up the build before getting it out to the nearest lake. Stop talking, look at me! <laughs> this is YouTube, you know? <laughs>